Hey there, folks. So, another day, another ITA video, am I right? Anyway, today I've got something special. So, last time around, the, when the ITA kit first came out, I actually got my hands on a release sample, uh, or excuse me, like a release preview or a manufacturing sample uh, to kind of demo and review and I thought it was neat as hell. Uh, unfortunately, a few things were lost in translation. I ended up doing the install a little bit wrong. Um, and then I circled back later and redid that and just did a whole nother video on it. Uh, but I've got a little bit of deja vu here because I've got that same GBA that I did the install on and some samples. Huh? 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 So you can, you can, if you recognize this, you probably know what we're uh, what we're getting at. Uh, so what I've got here today is a sample. I'd like to reiterate that this is a um, manufacturing sample and not necessarily going to be representative of the final uh, laminated kit that comes out, especially because um, this shell that I'm using, I don't think it's supposed to come with these screws, but it did. So, <laughs> um, I'm guessing that's not, I mean, maybe the plastics are final, but the packaging itself definitely wasn't. Uh, this little bracket for the screen, uh, I don't know if it's supposed to come with the kit or the shell, but I have it separate. And uh, I don't know, the finish on it isn't great, but it, it it's gonna work and, and you're not gonna see it so it doesn't matter but I, I'd expect a little bit more polish literally on the mold for the final bracket in case you're looking at this and going wow that's a really scuffed mold and well cr quite frankly it is but sample again and let us take a look at the kit itself da, 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 da. so here is the laminated ITA and I have it hooked up to a different kit than what it came with because unfortunately mine got damaged in shipping. Uh, so again, sample. Normally it looks like it's coming with the V3.2 ribbon. I don't know what specifically they changed between the 3.2 and the 3.0 ribbon, but I have mine plugged into a 3.0 ribbon um, because that's what I had on hand. and. Well, guess what came out of here? Anyway, uh, the ribbon cable connectors between the new version and the old version are not interchangeable. At least they were not for me. Uh, I don't know specifically what the difference is, um, but one is labeled V1.2, one is labeled V1.1, and the text is actually under the mask, so it's a little bit harder to see. Uh, but the 1.1, ribbon cable goes with the 3.0 kit and the 1.2 ribbon cable goes with the 3.2 kit. Now on to what specifically is wrong with mine. Unfortunately it looks like it just got raked in shipping at some point and a bunch of components got scraped off. Uh, I did replace the missing inductor but unfortunately I don't have, I don't know what these three missing components are supposed to be. I'm missing two two capacitors and a resistor and some traces between those two parts. Uh, I'm just going to throw this thing in the uh, parts bin and revisit it later. Uh, but my understanding is this is a retail kit, so it shouldn't make too big of a difference between this retail kit. Now I said I whipped out the uh, same Game Boy that I did the original install in, and I'm not using the kit out of this thing. Um, there's batteries in it, it does work, but you notice the lights are on, but nobody's home. Um, there's no kit in this thing. That got salvaged a long time ago for a completely different project. And this kit is from a brand new kit. I literally just scraped it off an old LCD so that we can get this done. But I wanted to show off the, uh, the new kit in all its glory, I guess. Um, so that being said, we are going to skip over quite a few steps of the install that I would normally cover such as um, like power usage and, you know, frankly, testing the kit before installing. I, I've tested this thing a few times already and it looks to be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. 
My donor here already has a ribbon cable connected up. Um, this is the 40 pin. I never removed C54 on this, so we'll be doing that. Um, and the original install I did with this thing, I didn't get the screen positioned right, and I also didn't know that you could just adjust the position of the screen after the fact, and I was just kind of bummed out, so I didn't do anything, ended up ripping the kit out, but, I mean, I guess I can go back and salvage it, but it's a bit of a moot point, because we're doing this now. Uh, so anyway, let's... I think we're good to go, actually, because uh, I've already got the kit wired up. I'm going to have to be a little bit careful with my wire routing because I got that wrong the first time around and got the wires crushed, but shouldn't be too big of a deal. Let me set that aside and save it. Um, I suppose it's worth noting on the uh, most recent ITA video I did with the this GBA, this console actually came with a V3.2 ribbon cable. Uh, so, again, I don't know what the specific feature difference is, if there is any, uh, but the kit I showed off in the previous video is the same kit that this would have come with. Should have come with. Uh, but anyway, I just keep reiterating. Um, what am I missing? I am missing, I need an LED light pipe for this. I had one. Let me go find one. All right, I can't believe you guys just let me go look for that thing. I spent all this time only to realize that, um, just one right there. Uh, anyway, let us go ahead and carry on with the install. Like I said, um, I didn't do the install white right the first time around so let us go ahead and remove the c54 capacitor here uh, since i am using a 40 pin uh, motherboard it does have to come out if you're using a 32 pin motherboard you can leave it, it doesn't matter uh, but the reason we want to remove that is because if we don't the screen won't be able to get calibrated and we want to be able to calibrate the screen. So let's, let's do that. Easiest way is to just get a soldering iron, tin both sides at the same time, and then you can just swipe it off. I am going to grab this, and I'm actually going to re-solder it back on, but only to one of the pads and just leave it hanging off. That way, if I ever want to undo this, I have the part right here to solder back on. Now, chances are pretty good I'm not going to want to undo this, but because of who I am as a person and because I reuse these parts, uh, parts being Game Boy Advance motherboards, because I reuse these parts on occasion for completely different builds. That's actually a little bit more likely for me. Uh, so anyway, that's off. We don't need to do any more soldering because I already did the button control wiring. Um, that means that's pretty much it. Again, I'm kind of glossing through this kit. Like I said, it's not the specific LCD kit that is going to come with these things. So I don't want to spend too much time on it. In fact, I am going to just tape this down. I got, I got extra tape on here. Uh, oh, because I think this will make handling just a little bit easier if it's uh, more like what we expect. And the retail kits should have this thing attached. That's exactly what we're going to do, just like that. This bracket is directional. We want to take the uh, side with the, with the cutout here and put that on the right. It should go something like this. If you're looking at the instruction, uh, ooh, I think I jumped the gun and sticking that down because the instructions, there's a different bracket. There's another cutout right here on the new bracket. 
Ah, of course I just stuck that down. One moment. This is why we do test fits beforehand, huh? That's okay. These things aren't too difficult to come off, but this specific pre-production bracket goes on just like this, and then the uh, ribbon goes over it just like that. But the bracket goes on back of the screen. Uh, the production version of this bracket, I believe, should have a cutout for the backlight because drop the screens. Probably shouldn't roll over that. It's still perfectly good screen. All right. So this thing. Now we need to install it. If you take a look at the profile of the glass, you can see that it is a uh, wedge shape. So uh, it is thinner at the top and thicker at the bottom on every side. And then if you closely inspect the shell, you might find a similar surface, but kind of the opposite. So this gets seated in from the top. There is a little hook right in the middle, and then it just slots down at the bottom. There's nothing really holding this in but gravity. If I flip this over, it is gonna come out. But once the uh, rest of the Game Boy is installed, it should be held into place with the uh, motherboard here. That's part of what this bracket is intended to do. Um, and then from here, install is gonna be pretty simple, but we do wanna do one step before committing here. Um, got the uh, laminated screen removal wire for peeling this thing off. It works. It could have worked better if it actually slipped under the tape instead of getting caught on the tape, but it is what it is. Anyway, we want to remove this little spacer here. It looks like this gets installed um, and by installed, I mean molded in at the factory to help with the uh, injection molding process. So unlike the previous versions of the shell, which were technically no trim, this does require a trim, but you can just do it with pretty much anything. Uh, in this case, I did it with a really dull knife that is probably dangerous to use because it's so dull. But I'll fix that at some point. Anyway. Wait, wait. And then, if all goes well, that should just seat in there. I know I didn't plug it in yet. I'm getting there. Just doing a uh, dry run. Making sure everything goes together. Heck. Looks like it fits pretty nicely. I am uh, I'm pretty pleased with that fitment. So let's get some buttons in here. I set aside two different sets of buttons because I couldn't decide, uh, but also because I didn't have a full set of the buttons I want to use. So I'm thinking we'll get a little bit crazy with it. I wanted to use the green ones. And I'm sitting here thinking, gee, what, what, what's that? What's green on purple? I haven't seen that before. That's definitely not a color combo that I've done before. No, mm -mm, not once. Um, and so I grabbed the orange to spice it up a little. And then uh, I realized exactly what I just created. And well, here we are again with yet another themed build that I swear I'm not doing on purpose at this point. I just like these color combos. But I also do like green and, uh, and orange and whatnot. Anyway. Oops. I'm trying to... I'm, I'm pressing on the front of the lens like it's actually attached to the shell and, and gives me something to press on. Of course it just sticks with the... Uh, the motherboard when I do that. Alright, so we've got to get that installed there. I am going to reuse the screws from my SNES install and I'll just put that back together later. That is the wrong size bit. That 
not even third size bit either. What the hell am I doing? Third try. Oh, that's beautiful. So, brand new shells from Funny Playing once again. Wow, who'd have seen that one coming? That's okay. Um, my understanding is these should be compatible with all of their kits, but right now it's only compatible with the ITA kit, the laminated one specifically, as they um, get that out. tuck that in there hopefully it doesn't have any interference but I'm sure it will oh that's one of the things they did with the new ribbon they moved the touch sensor because it can have difficulties placed right here if it's hitting the back shell it comes a little bit too close to this shielding and causes some interference so I'll have to look out for that I think for this test install, we should be pretty good to go. It all started because I just didn't have the green power switch. But that's okay. Again, this is a brand new shell. I'm just getting this threaded for the first time. Which always requires just a little bit more effort um, because it is not quite possible to put screw threads, at least this size, in a plastic injection molded shell. push one of those wires and it was hanging out in the accessory port. I think that screw hole was already threaded. Now that all of those are in, I'm going to back them off an eighth a turn just to make sure I didn't over tighten them. It's hard to tell with a new shell, uh, but the plastic screws just need to be snug. They don't need to be tight. And I hope that is the correct screw. We're good. All right, that didn't go too bad. Oh, that button is horrifying. Horrifying. That one's fine. This one feels like it's. Uh, is it running up against the wire or something? I don't know. Not a problem with the kit. Just a problem with my install. I say. Let's try it out. But wait, there's more. We'll get to in just a moment. Huh? Huh? So yeah, the touch sensor's in a bad spot. I called that. We don't need it because I do have button controls here. I think we can, is it five seconds? Or is it L and R first, then select? Looks like L and R first, and then select. If 
All right, so I am just adjusting the position of the LCD or of the display on the LCD. Uh, you just hold L and R and then hit select. The order does matter. Uh, hold L and R and then hit select. And then you see these little red lines pop up on the sides. Uh, if you don't see that, your screen is way too far off adjusted, but then you can just use L and R to move it up and down. Just move it to your liking and then L and R select to change to top and bottom, and then L and R one at a time moves it over left and right. And then L and R select, get that mode off, and then after a power cycle, it's gonna save those settings. Uh, but again, this is a feature of the older version of the kit the newer version of the kit likely comes aligned already. Uh, let us, let's do calibration. So I need flashcard. So we are going to use the AGS aging ROM here. Just pop that in and boot this bad boy up. And it comes into the menu. Uh, if you're not running yours off of a dedicated flash cart, you probably got to boot it holding L and R. And then it'll pop into the menu. Uh, I can't provide a link to this, but if you just search for AGS uh, aging, I swear it's in there somewhere. Well, yeah, AGS aging ROM. I'm sure you'll find something, but we want to go into test and then flicker adjuster to pull up this test pattern here. And then mine is actually pretty darn good calibrated out of the box, so I don't need to adjust it. Uh, but if you pull this pattern up and you notice your LCD is flickering quite a bit, you can take a uh, screwdriver, not that one because that one doesn't fit. Uh, that one looks like it should fit. Jam it in that hole in the back and then you can adjust the potentiometer, you just gotta not put your fingers over the touch sensor because it's gonna constantly adjust the brightness on you. Uh, but if you jam it back there and spin this around very slowly, you should be able to see the flicker come and go a little bit. Uh, I'm not seeing much on mine. Um, but I might not have the right screwdriver. I normally use a bigger screwdriver for this, but I also usually have the back off. Doesn't quite feel like it's catching the potentiometer. Uh, but it's also a subjective thing. Um, I do recommend calibrating your display because it is going to look better. It's going to get rid of a lot of the flicker. Um, it just so happens that mine happens to be calibrated out of the box, which is a little bit weird, but it is what it is. I'm not going to read into it. I did have an ITA in this thing before, and I had it calibrated to that ITA. Uh, so unfortunately there is something on the screen. I don't know what the heck is going on there, but that might just be... Oh, there we go. I can get the ref light reflected right like a constellation in the top left here and then a few more uh, chips I think they are in the screen but like I said it's a sample don't read into it too much uh, performance is probably on par with the uh, other ITA versions I don't expect too much but let's run some games anyway double check Let's do Pokemon Emerald. Looking about the same as it usually does. Don't forgive me, I'm tilting it back to look at it because this is not an IPS screen, so the viewing angles can be tricky despite the lamination. 
play this through the viewfinder here. And by play, I really just mean run around a little bit. Do I have anything that knows fly? Doubtful, yeah. But, yeah, there we go. Um, I don't want to do too much testing on this thing, because, again, I'm not using the specific ITA ribbon that came with this thing. Uh, but also, this is not final hardware, so anything that I say about this might not actually be representative of the actual final one. Um, the shell, I believe, is final, but the bracket definitely isn't. The screen panel might be, but the ribbon definitely isn't. So there, there's enough in here that's a little bit weird. Uh, one thing I am noticing uh, right, right now, just playing it, if I hit any of the buttons over here on the left side, I can see that it it moves the LCD just a little bit, just enough to cause some ripple in the screen. And that happens with both sides there. You can see it's basically doing this, but at a much smaller scale. Um, it's definitely something I noticed playing it. Again, not final bracket, things might be different. So we'll have to take a look at this again uh, when the actual retail version of this thing is out. But as is, I think it's pretty good. I certainly don't have any issues with it. He says after just pointing out an issue. Um, no, just minor quirk, I think doesn't really affect things too greatly. Oh, let's do, just to round things out, let's do Super Mario. So that's something I usually test on this sort of thing. But again, same ribbon, so I'm not expecting too much in terms of improvement or even um, iteration even. So with a test like this, one thing I'm looking for, oop, oh, that's gone. In this particular game, because this is a port of the original Nintendo Entertainment System version, and the Nintendo Entertainment System had slightly more vertical resolution than the Game Boy Advance did, um, I don't know why the devs did this, but they just literally scaled the game in post. Like, it, it runs exactly like it does on the NES version, and then they just scaled the video output down to match the GBA. Uh, in some cases, that results in some pretty significant flickering of some objects, notably the clouds in the sky or these bushes here. Uh, I have taken a uh, different look at this specific... Um, artifacting with some of the other kits and a lot of the other kits display this quite a bit worse because uh, one of the things that it generally is perceived as a pro with the ITA kit is that it doesn't really have that great pixel response time so that means the screen does ghost quite a bit but at the same time since the original GBA hardware also ghosted quite a bit, it actually matches a lot better because a lot of games are designed with that ghosting in mind. Uh, this is one of them. So that scaling trick is normally pretty much hidden. Oh my goodness, I'm doing terrible. I don't even have the excuse of the capture card right now. Um, so because of that ghosting, that scaling trick that they did in this game is pretty much hidden. Uh, now, I've, I've talked about this before, but uh, original Game Boy consoles did not have a way of showing transparency. So devs would work around this by just flickering a sprite on and off real quick. Well, lo and behold, 20, 30 years later, we have IPS kits with screens that have such absurdly better pixel response time. Um, you can see all of that flickering and it just looks bad. Well, the ITA kit has 
not as good pixel response, which makes the uh, flickering pretty darn hard to see. There's a way to do this. I'm having a hard time. There we go. So, not necessarily higher performance is a better thing in every case. Um, in the case of the GBA, I think it's probably a good thing because, you know, like I said, it, it makes games a little bit more uh, accurate to what the original devs might have intended. Oh, good lord. To what the original devs might have intended. Uh, personally, I prefer the look of the IPS screens a little bit better. Uh, the viewing angles are better. The, um... Wow, I forgot how much faster you run. Um... The viewing angles are better, the scaling looks quite a bit crisper and cleaner. Uh, just overall, the, the colors, totally different, a little bit more saturated. I like the oversaturated look. I understand it's not for everyone, but I like it. Um, oh, I didn't even need a power switch. There was one just sitting right there. So, yeah, to, to each their own. It's still a very, very good kit, and... You know what? I really like it. I, I think there's a place for it in my collection. Of course, I have basically every other kit. But that being said, I think the laminated version will probably replace my non-laminated version in my collection. But otherwise, you know, that's, that's pretty decent. But I'm not done. I have more to talk about because I got more in my little package of wonders. Uh, so, Funny Playing shipped quite a few samples. Some of them I am not allowed to discuss yet. Um, there will be, will be time, trust me. We'll come out soon enough. But a uh, pretty decent while back, they sent me this battery mod they were working on and a uh, 3D printed battery cover for this thing. And you know what? The battery mod was pretty decent. I was actually really happy with it, uh, especially compared to the sheer amount of other, um, quite frank, quite frankly, garbage on the market. Um, this thing did seemingly everything right. I liked that it had, oh, one of the nice features of the ITA screens, and it looks like it carries over to this iteration of the screens. You don't have to actually pull the thing apart to pull this battery terminal out it just it just pops right out there's no uh there's no pin release on the other side because the pin never actually clicks in it just seats in there uh, but just pop that out and the battery bay is already cut out so you don't need to do any of that and you can just pop your uh battery mod right in there in this particular case we got to go ahead and switch this bad boy on i like that it has a power switch for storage um, I like that the USB port is nice and easy to access and you don't need any weird like low profile connectors to act to charge it and it just works well not in this case but this is the old one I don't know what's wrong with it I'll have to play with it it's entirely possible that the battery is just dead but based off that flickering I'm guessing there's some other big problem uh, but that's hand assembled prototypes for you anyway this isn't the one I wanted to talk about. I'm going to go ahead and set that aside after switching it off, because I forgot. And it's time to look at the new hotness, as it were. So this, my understanding, is the retail version of this battery mod. I don't know if the battery is intended to come uh, fully attached to this board, uh, but this is this is the full retail version. I have that with authority, even though the packaging is not. Um, but this is about how they intend to send it to you. And for context, you can see this is V1.0, but so is my old version that you can see they totally swapped the layout on. Uh, that was also V1.0. Um, but I liked it that they had simultaneous play and charge. You know, they had load switching from the 
uh, charge input. Uh, they had low battery warning, albeit implemented kind of weird. There was just a light on this mod itself instead of triggering the built-in one. Um, and, you know, the battery life was just pretty decent on it. It wasn't, it wasn't great, um, but it was on par with a lot of the other kits, and I like that. Here we are with a totally new layout. Looks like he's using some new chips for some of these functions. Let's go ahead and get that battery plugged in there. They're using nice low profile ACHR connectors. Ah, excuse me, got the hiccups. Because of course I do. Um, mine is coming out a little bit too close to the board. It's gonna package kind of weird, but. I don't know if this tape around the battery is how they intend to ship them. Uh, but they've done away with the power switch and hopefully nothing else, but I guess we'll see. There we go. Drop that in there. Ooh, nope, not like that because I just pinched my wires. There we go. Run them through that little open cutout for the battery compartment, and it came with a injection molded battery door instead of a 3D printed one, which matches my shell perfectly. It is the exact same color. My understanding is these battery doors are actually shot at the same time as the shell in the same mold. So in the mold, you have the top, the bottom, and then two battery doors this one and then this one because it does actually stick out. Uh, it's not just a whole cut, it is a totally different geometry. But, plug this in, we'll go uh, full Monty here and we'll try with the USB-C host. Ah, oh, funny playing, you're breaking my balls. That's such a dumb thing to get wrong, especially when the old one supported that. Funny playing. Wait, did it support that? Let me. Never mind. The old one didn't support that. It's one of the things I complained about. I'm I'm disappointed that it wasn't fixed. In fact, that was like the only thing I complained about. Come on, guys. You can do better. All right. Well, USB-C host is a no-go, but. We can plug in a USB-A host, and you can see, if I can get my cable oriented properly, it's charging at a quite high amperage. Uh, so it's pulling 5 volts at 0.7 amps, which is 700 milliamps. And let me actually get with the battery thing off. And where is the charger on this bad boy? Oh, mine might not be retail because it's missing a giant resistor. Hopefully that's intentional. Uh, but blue means charging, and indeed it does seem to be charging. It says play and charge, so let's try it out, I guess. It does turn on, and I noticed my power meter pulled an extra 200 milliamps presumably to account for the GBA, which means, yeah, plain charge actually is probably properly implemented. Uh, the only other thing we can do to confirm that is if I come in here, not with metal tweezers, definitely with ceramic tweezers, and pop that off, you can see the Game Boy's still on, and it's still running no problem. We can even power cycle it if we want. But I'm going to unplug that while I plug the battery back in, just to be a little bit safe. Now there is actually an accessory for this specific mod. There's a little copper shim that they uh, intend for you to install right here. I guess it's self-adhesive. Uh, my understanding is the mod does not come with that. Actually, hold that thought, let me double check. Okay. I was mistaken. I'm glad I double checked because the copper shim that goes right here 
is intended to be included. Uh, it's just wasn't with mine. Uh, but otherwise, I'm going to let this go ahead and charge up and we'll do some battery numbers on it. Not in this video, but in another one I have upcoming. I'm actually going to test it in this GBA with an older uh, backlight kit in it. This has the 9380 and some pretty much depleted Rayovax in here because I just got done testing that. Uh, but we will run this kit in this console and see how it fares. This one already has an IPS ready back on it, or rather a backlight mod ready back on it, so should be pretty pain-free to test it. Uh, and then as soon as I'm done with testing, one day, go ahead and get that swapped out back to normal. But actually while we're here, let's take a look at the other battery covers. These are the battery covers that might be coming with some of the other kits. You notice they're just normal battery cover but with a hole cut in them for the USB. In case for some reason you have an old battery cover you want to use, do note that oh, it does actually fit. On the old version of the mod, it did not fit. And that plugs right in. So there's an option if you don't like the uh, proud port there, but personally I don't mind it and quite frankly I'd prefer the battery cover that matches my Game Boy. Uh, but for the sake of testing I will probably use this one just so it's a little bit more um, transparent if it, <laughs> as it were. Uh, but I'm into it. Like matching battery covers I think that's a pretty darn good idea. Uh, the port itself lines up pretty decently. Turn that that way, there you go. And uh, yeah, I don't know what all, what the packaging is gonna look like, uh, but the battery mod should be coming with that copper shim. I'm fairly certain the shell should be coming with the uh, battery cover. And I'm fairly certain the backlight mod should be coming with the bracket. Uh, but don't quote me on any of that. Um, otherwise, I'm cautiously optimistic about what I'm seeing with all three of these parts and accessories. Uh, the shell itself, which you kind of need with the IPS mod because good luck trimming your shell to fit this thing, especially if you want that kind of clean fitment. Um, but it is more or less drop in once you've got the shell too, so there's that. There is soldering. Uh, that you can do, but it's not required for full functionality because um, you've still got the touch sensor for brightness. You just don't have the position adjustment and you can't go down with brightness. You can only go up and then it cycles through. So it's not that big of a deal, but it is what it is. Um, though if you are using a 40 pin GBA, soldering is required because you want to remove that capacitor. Uh, but on the 32 pin GBA, it is more or less drop in. But yeah, I, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, like I said, we'll run some numbers on this battery mod and see how it stacks up compared to the old version and all of the other battery mods out there. Uh, we'll also see how this 2000 milliamp hour alleged battery fares. My understanding is that this battery mod does have a low voltage cutoff uh, safety for the lithium ion which is a little bit of a double-edged sword because it means you don't get the full capacity of the lithium ion available for you to use at any one given moment but uh, because it is a um, because of how lithium ion batteries work uh, the fact that we're cutting off the discharge a little bit earlier gives us more uh, usable life long term in the console so it might give us you know, half an hour less when we're uh, just, you know, out and about playing it compared to what it could if it didn't have a low voltage cutoff. But it also might make it last another year or two. Uh, you know, maybe it'll last three or four years instead of one or two. That sort of thing. Uh, so I personally think the trade off is worth it. Um, also, it does make the battery mod quite a bit safer if you're going to. Um, 
completely discharge it. Like, discharge it down till the GBA just, like, totally shuts off and stops playing anymore. Because um, lithium-ion batteries do have a small amount of self-discharge. So, if you were to do that, leave it on until it stops playing anymore, you'd be at the bare minimum with uh, the battery cutoff, and then it would keep draining from there. Whereas if we have a safety cutoff, we have a little bit extra headroom before we have to recharge the battery uh, and before we risk permanent damage. So, personally, I'm okay with it. There's very little actual usable capacity between where these low voltage safety cutoffs are and the actual like hard stop before you risk damaging the battery. Uh, so I'm okay with that. I don't think it's a problem. It's probably not as overzealous as Nintendo's because uh, in the Game Boy Advance SP, the low voltage cutoff is at 3.4 volts, which is a little high, but still there isn't really that much usable capacity below that. So it's not too big a deal, but it is what it is anyway. I think that's all I've got. I'm gonna go run some tests on this battery mod and we'll report back. One small, quick addendum. If you have this battery mod and if you want to use a battery door that does not have a USB-C hole in it, do note that it does not fit. You need one that has a cutout minimum or you need to use the one that comes with the mod or the shell or something uh, because the port is a little bit um, proud and so it needs a relief in the shell otherwise it doesn't fit but this has that relief and this has a hole that it can just poke through so they both work uh, but anyway that's all I've got super huge thanks to funny playing to for woo super huge thanks to funny playing for sending these my way uh, he did not send them to me directly but he did send them to uh, Retro Game Repair Shop who forwarded them my way and he did throw in a few extra goodies just for me. Uh, those goodies that I can't quite talk about yet, but I promise they're coming. I promise. Uh, and sorry for that weird pause. I, I wanted to try and uh, tease something. I, I went and asked my parents for permission. I, I asked I asked if I could be hardcore, but unfortunately I'm not allowed. So instead, we'll take a look at this um, thing real quick. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, something that one of my buds found in uh, Japan and I guess he picked it up because he couldn't help himself and quite frankly I wouldn't be able to either. Um, but it is a new ish Game Boy accessory. I think it was only like a few dollars, like a few hundred yen. Uh, so not even that bad. But it's this hard plastic outer shell with this uh, weird like TPU bubblegum pink inside shell. They they chose the weirdest color for this. Genuinely don't get why they picked Fleshlight Pink, but you know, we go. We can drop a game in there. We can drop another game in there. And then it's this nice little case. You can put your charm on it or something and and it's this game. Um, but it is pretty ambiguous, I guess. Uh, it's, it's actually pretty nice. I dig it. It's just, the color is a weird choice, but as far as, uh, you know, cases for your game, that's pretty decent. You don't get better than that. Nice little uh, travel case, I think. Um, probably good for, or even better for, like an EverDrive or an Easy Flash, you know. Put all your games in there. Yeah. Boom. Nice. Anyway, that's all I've got. I will go ahead and throw links to this stuff down in the description. By the time this video goes up, they'll probably be live for purchase. I think... I think the shell and the screen are. I don't know if the battery mod is, or vice versa. One of the two. Uh, I don't think that they're all dropping at the same time. But anyway, that's all I've got. Um, sorry I couldn't tease some upcoming funny playing stuff, but I don't want to lose my access. You know how it is. Uh, so that's all I've got, and I'll catch you all next time.